Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to another vintage show and tell where I'm showing you some of the things I picked up in the year of 2022. A nice no buy, low buy year for me where I still picked up quite a few exceptional vintage pieces that I thought you might want to see because I know I'm a magpie but I know some of you out there are as well and like looking at vintage treasures just as much as I do. Let's go ahead and dive on in. And the first piece I want to show you isn't that vintage because I'm pretty sure that this is from the 1980s or 90s, maybe the 70s. It's this giant, I think they called it a bamboo brooch. It's sort of just abstract. It almost looks like crocodile skin to me. That's what this looks like uh, to me, more so than bamboo. This is an unsigned piece, but as you can see, it is a nice large size, which we all know. I love a giant brooch. I think it would be quite fun as an accent, like along a yoke or something like that. Almost a military insignia in a very abstracted sort of way. But I love a brutalist piece of jewelry, which is what I would count this as. Um, it's probably from, again, the late 70s, the 80s, the 90s, sometime in there. Not very, very vintage, but a lot of uh, large size jewelry came out of that era. And I love an exaggerated brooch. So I'm very happy to have added this one to my collection over the last Christmas sale period, just recently here, right in before the tail end of the year. I can't shop online for other people without finding a few things for myself, so. But on the opposite side of the style spectrum almost, I have this 1940s brooch. This is probably a late 30s, 1940s brooch. And as you can see, it's completely oxidized. I think this was probably a brass or copper finish originally, uh, but the back has a little bit of tarnishing and patina going on. That makes me think that this is an un unintentional finish on this. I think this was brass and pink, and I'm not sure if someone oxidized this on purpose or if this is just something that has happened through time. But as someone who loves oil slick and iridescent finishes, when I saw a 40s brooch in an oil slick color, uh, there was no way I was going to pass this by. So I picked this one up earlier in the year in 2022. I really love like patinaed and verdigris finishes, a little bit of rust, a little bit of, you know, copper turning green, that kind of a thing, which you may be seeing a little bit more of those effects here on the channel here soon. So uh, when I saw this brooch, I just knew it had to come home with me immediately. Another nice sized brooch here with some rhinestones was this one. And again, there are a couple of pink bits of this, but it is much more of a red and mauve and yellow finish. This is a glass... Uh, foil-backed cameo, uh, probably a Czech glass piece, a Czech jewelry piece in general. It is unsigned in any way, but it looks Czech to me. I found this from one of the Czech glass rhinestone jewelry sellers on Etsy. I would love something like this in every color of the rainbow. This to me just makes me think of like the exaggerated colors of say the haunted mansion in the daylight kind of a thing where like it's spooky or it reminds me of like the love witch. It's kind of like Victorian, but also 1960s, which is probably when this piece is from, I would just imagine probably either the 1960s or maybe even into the eighties. I'm not sure when a lot of these were made because they're still making them. So it's hard to know, but I just think it's so fun and very like psychedelic vampire, which, you know, another small side of my style that I don't dip into often, but when I do, what a spectacular piece to accent with. And this was a little bit more on the expensive side. They are quite collectible, these glass cabochon ones in the larger sizes and more unique colors. I would love to find something like this in green or in purple or even in blue. There's one in blue right now online, but it's way out of my price range. So um, I won't be grabbing that one, but this one I think was around my birthday when I picked this one up. So it was a little bit of a present to myself. And then another rhinestone brooch I picked up this year was this Leaf Buddy, which was part of that massive haul that I picked up earlier in the year. I can put a link up to this video where my favorite rhinestone jewelry, like antique jewelry booth at my favorite antique mall was liquidating going out of uh, the antique mall. They were selling everything. So it went down to 50% off, then 70% off, then 90% off. So I went back and picked up this large leaf here. This is probably a DE um, Juliana piece. It's not signed in any way, but that's just, it looks like a Juliana to me. It's got root beer, citrine, green, and then Aurora Borealis rhinestones in this fall leaf, sort of oak leaf shape. And we all know how much I love fall anything, autumn themed anything. So I just could not pass this buddy up for 70% off or whatever it was at the time. Probably it was down to like $14 for a piece that would be around 114 normally. So had to snap up this buddy. It was just the one that I forgot to talk about in those videos, weirdly enough. And then another giant sort of modernist probably 1980s brooch was this buddy, which is an absolutely massive slice of, you know, gold plated nonsense here. This is a piece of jewelry that definitely reminds me of Mugler, of 1980s Givenchy pieces, of those big pieces from Monet. I'm not exactly sure who makes this one. It does have a small mark on the back that seems to be a V with a copyright symbol. I'll have to look it up. Could be Vendome or something like that. I'm not sure who makes this one, but it is 
just of the kind of scale that I'm after because I'm really leaning into, you know, now I'm in my 30s, I can do whatever I want. I'm leaning into sort of the uh, eccentric queer uh, substitute teacher vibes, you know, who comes in and talks a lot more about socialism than she should. Like that's kind of, you know, I'm leaning into the weird art teacher vibes. And I think that exaggerated strange jewelry really helps with that. So I was really happy to pick this one up. I actually grabbed this one for pretty inexpensive. I think it was around $25. And I have seen it marked as a Les, Les Bernard, which I'll talk about some Les Bernard pieces in a minute, um, for like over $100. And I don't, I don't really know what's going on with this, but I grabbed it for cheap and I think it's epic. But yes, I invested in a couple of these absolutely massive collar necklaces, this like snake chain collar necklace from Le Bernard. And I say Le Bernard because it's Les Bernard and I don't know uh, if it's got a French pronunciation or not. These are actually unsigned. I have this silver colored one and I have the gold colored one here as well because I had to have both. Let's just all be glad that it doesn't come in other colors because if there was a copper one, I need to have it. These are on the expensive side and are quite collectible. This giant massive, this is about almost an inch and a half. I would say it's at least an inch and a quarter, if not an inch and a half wide, this giant coil on these. And you know, they're huge and unwieldy and kind of weird. Um, yeah, but they're actually a pretty good size on me. And sometimes things can be quite small. So this is, this is not bad. I can wear it with a turtleneck or obviously with anything, honestly, again, probably from the 1980s, these buddies. And uh, I picked these up to wear in the shine lookbook and really did kind of treat myself on these. They're quite expensive. Um, I think I paid 75 for each of these, but they regularly go for 100 to 150. I've seen them on Etsy. So I thought I did pretty well. Um, if not, I mean, I still, it's a lot of money for necklaces. Don't get me wrong. I agree with you. Um, but I think these are such absolutely classic pieces. And as I lean more and more into that kind of neo-noir, very Blade Runner tinged sort of style, I think these are just absolutely perfect for that. It's a 1940s style taken to a 1980s exaggeration, which is like my favorite sort of zone to be in. I have a couple of hats that fall into that area as well. So I really love the interplay between the 1940s and 1980s. And then these just really help me with styling outfits like those. And again, goes to show that when it comes to costume jewelry, it's not just the older pieces that are collectible. A lot of the stuff that is newer from the late seventies through now is still quite collectible because not a lot of nice quality costume jewelry is being made anymore. Um, especially things like brooches because brooches are not in style anymore. So they are rare and rare, especially for large, nice, stable things like this. Um, and pieces even like these, which are, you know, not necessarily designer pieces in the same way. It's not like a Dior or a Chanel piece, but they are becoming only ever more collectible and no one's making more of the nice quality costume jewelry. So I do think they're a pretty good investment because down the line, I think other people will want to wear these as well. And then we have my spectacular birthday splurge. I mean, that was probably a bad idea after this, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll understand when you see it. This is a, again, Czech glass rhinestone necklace. Um, this one is in sort of a Montana blue color with a little bit of turquoise and then some other strange, random, multicolored rhinestones. It's just about the most stunning necklace I've ever seen, ever. See, you know, some people collect like real fine jewelry and I'd rather have this than one gold bangle. Uh, that's actual gold, uh, because look at it. It looks like it's cursed. It looks like if I wear it, I'm going to curse you. It, it's contagious in some ways. It's just absolutely decadently delicious. I need to get a better clasp for this because the clasp is just a little um, lobster clasp. Couldn't find the word, but uh, I need to get like a more substantial clasp on that buddy. But I mean, I need to make a blue velvet gown just to wear this with although with brown it's not a bad deal you know with a scarf and the beetle it's a bit much but hello i mean for any formal occasion for any tuesday for going to trader joe's i mean it's just stunning i can think of no better 31st birthday present to oneself than this oh my god i love it so much i mean that is a statement necklace so i didn't have anything quite this spectacular in my collection and I thought this was a pretty good price for this. I paid around $125 for this necklace. Very expensive. Uh, as you can see, I've bought less, but fancier things this last year, which really is this an improvement. Uh, I used to buy a lot of cheap things and now I buy less, more expensive things and I kind of save up for stuff. But I guess that's maturity coming through a little bit, but it does mean spectacular things like this get added into my little grabby hands. This is again a Czech or like a mainland Europe 
made piece here with like a fused rhinestone chain construction here. I'm not sure when this one is from. Some of the colors of rhinestone in, the, in this, um, like the rainbow colored rhinestones, I think are on the older side. So I think this one is probably from like the 1960s or beforehand. That's just a guess though. I have no idea. Again, a lot of this style of jewelry is still make, being made um, in the glass producing, producing centers um, in Europe. So it's hard to know, but these central stones here, they look 30s almost. So I think this is a older costume jewelry piece and is just about as spectacular as it gets. I'm going to need to make a blue or a green or something like a velvet evening gown with a nice open neckline to wear this. And then I can just wear that once a week, I guess. You know, just wear that for dinner. I need to have fancy dinner at my house at least once a week. Like we need a Downton Abbey, the situation where like, if you come to stay, we get dressed up for dinner or something because I have too many nice things to wear. And we'll just, you know, set this one in the background for now. Cause uh, I know you want to keep looking at it. So do I. I do have a few silk scarves to show you. I'm wearing a really epic one here, but this one is not vintage. So I do have a few like modern, like designer scarves. Do you want to see those? Let me know. But this is not a modern scarf. This is a 1940s or 50s scarf here in a nice lightweight sort of crepe silk. And of course, autumny colors. We have a nice bright yellow, orange, brown, and then black all around the sides here. Cannot beat autumn color. Obviously I could wear this one instead of the one I have on today and it would still go quite well despite the black and the brown. Luckily this does have both colors in it so I can wear it with either. I do still need to do a full scarf collection video sometime. It might wait until I like have to pack and repack my closet when I move. So that it's going to be a good time to do a lot of like entire collections videos and collections videos are like going through my vintage in general um, or styling it in different ways. I think would be a fun thing to do as live streams maybe in the future. So that's something I'm hoping to hopefully experiment with in the future once I'm in my new space is possibly going through my collection and, you know, hanging out on live stream with all of you and being able to do kind of a more live stream sort of back and forth show and tell sort of situation. So let me know if that's something that interests you because it is something that I have had in mind. Another silk scarf that I picked up this last year in nice autumn tones was this buddy from Echo, which has like moths and butterflies, mostly butterflies, I think. Not that they're that different. Lepidopterus can let me know, but in shades of, you know, brown and mushroom and sage and red. And we all know how much I love butterflies and bugs and entomology. So to have these darker colored ones on this black like dark, deep black silk scarf. Absolutely delicious and perfect in every way for me in my wardrobe. And I'm just, you know, one of those things where I saw it and I thought, yep, that's mine. <laughs> because uh, I think this one was around $20, if not less than that. This is a more modern Echo brand scarf. I think this one is probably from the 1990s or the 2000s even, but I do not care because butterfly, like autumn toned on black butterfly. If I could find fabric yardage like this, you know how much I would be there in a heartbeat to have that? Can't beat a nice silk scarf with butterflies. And then the last scarf I have to show you today is one from Dana Buckman, which again, I think is a um, 1980s or 90s scarf. And the black on this is faded on the back a little bit to navy, but it is such a large size. This is probably a 40 inch, well, maybe like a 36 inch scarf, but the print on this of these lilies reminds me so much of 1940s bark cloth and 1940s like home decor fabrics that I absolutely died when I saw this and had to pick it up, especially because of this giant size. I love wearing scarves like this over the shoulder now. You saw me do that in the Halloween lookbook. It's something that Miss Emerald Eden on Instagram, I can link to her Instagram below, does quite often. She wears scarves in this beautiful draped way and like belts them. And I'm just obsessed with doing that. And you need quite large scarves in order to get away with it. So when I see a giant scarf with a black background in a 1940s floral, there was absolutely no way I could pass this one up. I did have to I saved it on Etsy for like a week or so because I wasn't sure because it was a little bit pricier than I normally pay, but it's a little bit larger and a little bit more spectacular than I normally find. So the thing about silk scarves is I can wear them forever as well. You can, you can wear them at 31 and look a little bit like an old lady and you can wear them when you're an old lady. So I think that they are a very good investment and uh, hold their value. Of course, they're silk and are quite collectible in their own right, even though you can get them for quite cheap sometimes. I, I haven't been buying silk scarves online for very long or like collecting them properly for long because most of the time I was picking them up at the thrift store for 99 cents. You can get really nice silk scarves at the thrift store for really cheap sometimes. I get them for 50 cents on Saturdays when they're 50% off. So make sure to check the scarves at the thrift store because you don't have to 
pay for fancy ones online. Someone out there is grabbing them from the thrift store and selling them to me. So might as well be you, honestly. And as you can tell, this video, I'm focusing on accessories. I don't really have a ton of clothing items to show you from the last year. I do have done some thrifting. I've been looking for sweaters primarily. Um, so if you want a thrift haul where I will talk about the vintage clothes I picked up in the last year, let me know if that's something you would like to see. I do like styling thrifted finds. I haven't done a video like that in a long time, but um, I do like doing them. They just don't, aren't, don't do as well here online as sewing videos do, but let me know if you'd like to see that. But yes, focusing mostly on accessories and I'll talk about this little handbag next. Pretty sure this one's from the 1950s or 60s. It's got a kiss clasp on the inside here. You can see like that. And then it's sequins on lame with all of these plastic teardrop shaped, like kind of teardrop shaped crystal chandelier beads. The entire handle is wrapped in beads. The whole thing is a beaded little bucket bag. And I just think it's the cutest fringy, makes a fun noise thing ever. I have this black one and I have actually since picked up a gold one as well. And I'm on the hunt, of course, for every other color they ever came in. I tried to grab a red one, but it turned out it was for children and it was half this size. And I do need to at least put my phone and my keys in these things. So that one didn't work out. Look, I'm just a child who's still playing dress up and this has everything going for it. It's black, it's sparkly, and it makes a fun sound. So perfect for taking out to dinner anytime with me. I think this is just a great staple evening handbag to have in my collection. And then this was a recent acquisition. I picked this buddy up in the sort of November, December sale time period here online on Etsy. This was around $35. It is a faux leather in a Jaguar, modeled like Jaguar metallic, sort of green patent leather, faux leather, with a kind of door knocker Victorian looking clasp on it. I'm not sure if this one's from the 1980s or from earlier. Um, I could see this being from the 80s. I could see this being from the 60s. There isn't a label on the inside to give me a clue. Sometimes the font choices give a pretty good clue, but there's no labeling on this, buddy. It's just a faux patent bag in a delicious green color that's perfectly villainous, has this little bit of a swoopy swoop on the front. Absolutely perfect for me in my more vampire style leanings. As I've said, I'm kind of just always on this sliding style scale of like a vampire pirate in the past to like a noir casino owner in the future. And I kind of just swing between those different things. And this is definitely on the more vampy side of my style, but just gorgeous. And it matches my bait heels that I have in this color so well. So I'm happy to be matchy matchy always. And a clutch handbag that has already appeared here on the channel recently is this one. This was featured in the Synapse lookbook where I raved about it because I just think this is an amazing shape. I really do. Someone said you could learn to make that. And I really do need to learn how. Like I could take a pattern from this. I need to learn how to make leather clutches because leather, it turns out, it's not that expensive and comes in amazing finishes. And I wouldn't mind having a bag like this in every color. So that might be something I need to figure out. If any of you are uh, comfortable or have experience working with leather and can point me in some good directions for making something like this, do let me know. It just has a magnetic clasp here in the front. I know the machine can handle it because a lot of people buy old Singer like iron machines to do leather work. So I'm assuming with some leather needles and some patience, I can make it work on the machine. I just have to figure out how to wrangle it. And like, what do you put inside to give it this nice structure? If you know how to do leather working like this, let me know because I would love to replicate this 1980s buddy. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous in this pewtery kind of leaning towards gunmetal silver. Gonna get a lot of wear in my wardrobe again, sort of a brutalist modernist Blade Runner ready piece that I'm super happy to have added to my collection. And I think it's gorgeous. And then it wouldn't be me if I didn't have a few plastic flakes to talk about. So, you know, now is the time. This buddy in black and white, very Lego-tastic, this buddy. Speaking of structure, she has lost a little bit of hers. So I need to put some sort of piece of plastic in here, something inert that will help it hold its structure. I usually just slip a piece of plastic or um, acid-free card into the bag itself to give it a little bit more structure when they've become a bit floopy like this for the years. They do have cardboard usually in them. That's if you look in uh, between the tiles and a lot of Plastiflex, you will see, actually you can see in this one, there's card in there. Um, so that is how they were made originally. So I don't feel too bad about that being a thing. Of course, the card has lost some of its structure over the years. These were not a, an expensive thing back in the 1940s when they were a trend. They were, you know, something that was an alternative to leather and nice handbags. So what's funny to me now that they are incredibly collectible. This one I picked up for $30, which is an, a screaming deal for a black and white Plastiflex in such good condition. A couple of the tiles, I think there was one broken tile. We might have a, yeah, there's one broken tile here on the end. One broken tile does not warrant this being $100 underpriced. Um, I found this at Boss Vintage here in Denver in like a pile of clutch handbags. I'm not sure why they didn't have this priced higher because they do know their stuff down there, but thank you. 
uh, for the gift because I was very thrilled to look down and see a Plastiflex for $30 and it came home with me instantly. And then another Plastiflex that I added to my collection this year for, for full price um, or like the going market value would be this one. Sometimes when they, I mean, they don't pop up often. And so when a rare color combination like this comes up, even if it's, you know, at market value, which is around $100, give or take, these days at least, um, I have a hard time not going for them because they are just so rare. And this one is in absolutely amazing condition. I mean, the, the fabric on the inside is faded a little bit, but the outside, all of the tiles are perfect. There's not a single chip on this and all the like ribbing, um, the wax coated cotton cord that holds it together is in really good shape as well. Sometimes that is completely flaked apart. Oh, there's one chips tile in here. Um, and this is in just super great condition. So very happy to add this giant red and black number to my Plastiflex family. We all know that I'm still on the lookout for blue or green Plastiflex. If you ever see a green Plastiflex, like literally Instagram me, message me, inundate me, find me somehow because I don't care what it costs. I need to know about it at least so I can decide if I want that or a mortgage because I just love these handbags. And if I could find one in green, that would be the ultimate, but I'm happy to have another red and black number to add to my collection. I do still need to figure out how I can like scan and sculpt and 3D print tiles like this because I don't think they would be that hard to make if I could figure out how to do that. So I really need to make a friend who knows how to do 3D work. So if that's you and you really want to have me have a very tiny bit of input and you have a lot of work, let me know. And I do have one more to show you. This one is just a black plastic flex clutch. I say just, it's a different tile design than any of the others I have in my collection. And it's like a smoother tile design. Uh, for me, these like make me think of the Frank Lloyd Wright concrete block houses. The blocks I have back out on set are quite inspired by those Frank Lloyd Wright houses. And that's what this reminds me of as well. And again, if I could find this in like a gray concrete color, how happy would I be? I just really, like all, every time I do these videos and I have plastic flux to talk about, it just makes me think about how I need to figure out how to make these. So we need to recycle some plastic into this. If I can figure out how to make recycled water bottles into one of these, that's my new like long-term stretch goal for my life, you know? Because we need to make them in gray, purple, we need to make them in bronze. We need to make them in copper that's like half turned green. <sighs> I have a lot to do, but black plastic flex are the most used plastic flex in my collection. The ones that I actually take out and about with me the most often. And this one is just divine. And so I'm happy to have added it to the family. So those were my best finds of 2022. Feel free to let me know about your best finds below because I always like hearing about vintage being rescued from the wild, um, the wilds of the internet or the wilds of actually out in the real space. This is only the second time I've ever seen a Plastiflex out and about. I found one other one other time, but um, that one I actually ended up selling because I had a duplicate of it because I'm a Plastiflex magpie, as we know. And I'm just a Corvid who likes shiny, pretty things, and hopefully you liked seeing them too. Thank you as always for watching today, and I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.